Hi, I'm Wendy Morado, and welcome to another edition of Cat Chat. And today I'm here with our doctor at Quick Fix, Dr. Ashley Berardi. Hello. Uh, yep, and we're here to talk about a really serious problem. Um, we wanted you folks out there to know that this can somewhat be preventable, mm -hmm. that this is something that happens a lot, mm -hmm. um, and it's very serious. This little kitty that we're going to talk about, her name is Juniper. Uh, my husband named her after computer software program, <laughs> named Juniper. And um, she was a little barn kitten. Mm -hmm. And she came in with four other kittens. Yep. They all have an upper respiratory. You want to talk about that? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Um, so the lady brought in four kittens. She brings in a lot of kittens to us, um, a lot of more barn cats. You know, we say barn cats, you know, these cats living in a barn, not really seen daily by people. Um, so when she brought them into us, they were pretty sick. The majority of them had, you know, pretty easily treatable upper respiratory infections, uh, meaning that basically the eyes were affected. They had a lot of um, discharge from the eyes, enough to where a lot of the eyes were swollen shut. They had a major conjunctivitis, um, which is a common uh, sign of these infections, and a lot of times a discharge from the nose and some sneezing. The good thing about these infections is that it's not in the lungs for the most part, it's all kind of like a head cold, as if you will. Like if kids have a little head cold, kind of the same thing. Um, however, if you let it go too bad, you know, without cleaning out the eyes, treating it, treating with antibiotics, then you can get to a point where the eyes get really bad, they can go blind, they can get so swollen to the point where they do um, become irreparable and, and you have to remove the eye in order to treat it. Um, not, be, not only because they can't see from it, but because it can be so painful. Um, and so that's what our little kitten Juniper here, um, her, eye, um, her eye infection got so bad that we're going to have to remove the eye because it, what's called prop toast or came out of the, uh, the uh, socket. And so at that point, the way, because the way the eye looked, because you know, a lot of times you can replace these eyes, but because it's been out, it appeared to have been out for such a long time that it start, the eye started to die. And so at this point, the, you know, the, the best thing for her would be to remove the eye, and I think it would also help with a lot of the pain. That she's in because she can't blink correct yeah she cannot blink the eye is out to the part where she can't blink it's really dry you know eyes need to be kept very moist this eye is very dry now the cornea the, the main part of the eye you can't see it because it's covered with a, a thick crust or a scab um, you know the eye is still mobile but there's no there's no vision and there's no way to replace it at this point taking it out would be or doing what's called a nucleation would be the best option for this girl right we do plenty of enucleations here. Oh yeah. For kitten crazy yes. kittens. Yes. Yes. Only we we do not really do enucleations for the public because we'd be we'd be in a nucleation clinic. Right. Right. <laughs> but I really felt for this kitten. Oh yeah. Um and her siblings because they the one sibling was so sickly and um I was telling you this this morning in the staff that my nephew, he's six, and he calls skeleton skelebones. So <laughs> I, I said, she's like a skelebone. Yep. Um, because she has, her backbone is literally mm -hmm. like this. She was so. Yeah. She was the runt, definitely. And so on her way out, mm -hmm. um, just lots of mucus out of her nose, just, just solid cover. Mm -hmm. I have to keep keep that clean. Right. I did take them home. Mm -hmm. They came in Saturday. This is Tuesday. They're doing great. So is she. Good. Her name is Ayala Ooh. after software. There are five software programs yes. living in my upstairs Perfect. <laughs> bedroom. Perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> so Ayala is just doing great now. We gave her fluids and antibiotics. You put mm -hmm. her on antibiotics and eye meds mm -hmm. and fluids and, um, and that. But we, you also had me put Juniper on some pain medications. Yes. Yes. Um, because this condition is incredibly painful. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to say kind of a little bit of a disclaimer before we have Juniper come out and visit with us mm -hmm. that this is a condition that is um, very unpleasant to look at. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a weak stomach, you definitely don't want to look. Right. Of course, that kind of makes people everybody want to look oh yeah, yeah. definitely so it definitely. was like well I, I don't know if i right okay what is <laughs> let me see that all right but truly can be like 
like yeah, it, it flip flip flop your tummy a little bit. Yes, yeah. yeah. If you're not used to seeing it. If you're you know? not used to seeing it. So um, let me just get her out, and she is semi feral. Mm -hmm. um, she's a little girl. She only weighs two pounds two ounces. At eight weeks old, they are. They're She's two pounds of might, that's for two sure. Two pounds of, I want to get away from you because yep. I don't know humans really well. Mm -hmm. um, I've been working with her. I cuddle with her. So now is the time that if you want to not look, don't look. But this is our little, this is our little girly. And this is our condition here. Mm -hmm. And at this point, she still the has a eye, runny yeah. eye over on this side. Oh but, yeah. yeah. At this point, this eye is not repairable. It's one of the you know the way it looks. It looks infected on the outside. I mean, there would just be no way to repair the eye at this point. Yeah. And from what it looks like, she also might have had a, a laceration or an injury to her actual cornea, where the inside of the eye is now coming out. Yeah. Um, and you know. I, I would be rambunctious too if I had my eyeball sticking on the outside of my head. And painful. Um, yeah, but I'm hoping that we have her on two different types of pain medications, yep. an anti-inflammatory and then a, an opioid. Because, you know, I never had my eyeball sticking outside my head before, but I can only imagine how painful it is. Oh. And so I'm the kind of a veterinarian, I like to over-treat for pain because I would hate, I would hate to, for her to be painful yeah. like this. So we're going to get the surgery done today, um, get yeah, done as today. soon as we can to hopefully make her feel better. And in two weeks, we're gonna show her on our next show, because we tape every two weeks, Just, yeah. if we can. <laughs> Andy is behind the camera. Andy and I have sometimes conflicting schedules, but typically you see us every two weeks have a new show. We are definitely going to give you a follow-up on our little Juniper. Mm -hmm. um, and let you see how much better she is. Yeah. And okay, how, baby. and, and actually, um, we're going to send her to our prison foster home after her um, initial recovery, recovery yeah. because she, she's going to have re to remove some stitches. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is typical for an enucleation. You can't just glute her like we do with surgeries. <laughs> we do two layers of internal stitches that are dissolvable, and then mm -hmm. we glute her the top, correct? Mm -hmm. But in a nucleation, you can't do that. Right, right. You have to remove out the whole eye uh, along with the, all the um, glands associated with it. And then there will be sutures to sew the eyes shut. Um, and then they'll come out in 14 days after that. And we have a couple of um, cats over there. Do you have her really good? Because she's mm -hmm. going to fly. Yeah. Um, we have a little, couple of little cats over at Kitten Crazy right now that have missing eyes, well, they don't last very long because people come in and they're like, oh, I want that one because that, that one mm -hmm. needs me. Yeah. Um, she's, she's kind of, she needs a lot of socialization. Mm -hmm. So she's going to go to the prison first to get smother mothered by either the men's prison or the women's prison, mm -hmm. probably the men's prison because um, uh, they, they are really oh, like bet, yeah. nurturing, you know, to these guys. Um, and we go to Grafton Prison, so she'll probably go there. And um, but if you're interested in adopting her, please give us a call three three zero five nine one four four zero eight, and you can um, put your name on a list to adopt her. She's a darling. She's mm -hmm. gonna be fine. She oh yeah. She may be semi feral, but she doesn't um, scratch or bite or anything. She oh, just no. wants away from you. I think she's more afraid from yeah. being being in the barn, and then just her eye. You know, her I eye think hurts. once I think once that's out of there, and you know, right now, I mean, she's scared right now, but she's not I trying to boo. fight or anything. And but you can see, um, well, Dr. Ashley, um, you saw her on Saturday, mm -hmm. and she had a little runny nose and mm -hmm. eye, and. The azithromycin that you put her on has really cleared that up nicely mm -hmm. so that she can have her surgery today. And uh, hopefully she just um, zips through that and we'll see a new kitty next week. Mm -hmm. So um, for the folks out there who have never met you, sure. um, you're here at Quick Fix every mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and uh, you perform surgeries. Mm -hmm. You're a surgical veterinarian and you do a lot, all the wellness on Saturdays for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, you want to tell the folks anything about yourself that you want to get? Sure. let them know? Um, I'm from West Virginia originally, and I moved up uh, to Ohio to go to vet school. I went to Ohio State University. I graduated in 2014. I'm living up here in Lorraine with my sister and her husband, but I'm getting ready to buy a house now with my fiance, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I worked my first couple years out of vet school uh, just as a general practice, a general practitioner. And then I kind of wanted to try the shelter medicine life, and I'm really enjoying it and getting to help the animals that don't have naturally, you know, a voice for themselves. That's so. right. And you're so good. 
So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. So that's Dr. Ashley, and that's our situation with Juniper. Stay tuned for the next show in a couple weeks to see how she does. <laughs>